Okay, we've covered uh, omnidirectional microphone yep. patterns because they're the easiest to deal with. The next simplest pattern is mm -hmm. the figure eight pattern. Figure eight pattern, let's do it. What yep. mics use the figure eight pattern? Uh, a, actually, a surprisingly wide variety. Pretty much anything that's termed a noise cancelling mic will be right. a figure eight. Okay. Now, these conceptually are probably even easier than the omnidirectional microphone mm -hmm. because we've got a wobbly diaphragm. Wobbly diaphragm again. And basically it's it's fastened within a, uh, well, picture that as being the microphone body. Mm -hmm. So we've got a front aperture and we've yep. got a rear aperture. And let's just pretend that, you know, we've got something in there that uh, can sense relative movement of that. Okay, this is a relatively bizarre thing. You get three different effects from this. First of all, picture this. Let's, uh, let, let's hang on, let's call this one the front side and that one the back side. Back side, yep. Okay, let's say we've got sound coming at it this way. A slight angle, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah well, vaguely front. Okay, yeah. front on, all right. Okay. The pressure on there comes from the front wave, mm -hmm. but then a bit of a while later, we get pressure on the back. We do. If the incoming frequency is very, very low, so we've got long wavelengths, mm -hmm. okay, the pressure on there is damn near zero. Right. Because we're going hoof, 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 with the pressure, you know, positive yep. and negative pressure and that diaphragm can almost not move, move at, at all. At all, given a long enough wavelength. Yeah, right. because the pressure at the front and the back of the diaphragm are almost identical. I.e. sensitivity at that frequency is zero. Yeah. Go higher frequency. Okay, and etc. etc. And the pressure at the front mm -hmm arrives there, well, how do you put it, physically sooner than the wave at the back. So the frequency response winds up looking like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, get, get to, a, oh, well actually in principle it just keeps on going. Right. But we get that uh, one on F type frequency response simply due to the physical size of the thing. <coughs> okay, uh, we get a second effect. Okay, so that incident. Okay, you can edit out the blah, 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 can't you? I can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I thought this was supposed to be a blah, blah, free zone. Uh, all of this, okay, I've, I've drawn those wave fronts with some curvature, but we're actually looking at distant sound sources. Right giving rise to what's effectively a one on F frequency mm -hmm. response. Let's have a look at more proximate okay. sound sources. And Which is what these are typically used yes, for? Yes, they're used okay. close up on your lips. Right. Okay. So, so these would be what, studio or uh, mics? Or no, no? Uh, uh, aircraft. Oh, of course, because of course, you yep. where they're noisy noise environments. In inherently noise cancelling. And noise. telephony call centres. Aha, uh -huh, yes. Then why do I hear, every time I get a call centre, I'm hearing all the bloody <laughs> chatter in the background? There's probably a couple of good reasons for that, and I'll <laughs> tell you all about that too. Uh, let, let's say we've got a proximate noise source that's right there. Yep. Okay, so. Like an inch away. Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm imperial. 25.4 uh, 25 millimetres away, yeah. Precisely. Okay, well guess what? The pressure entering here, okay, mm -hmm. that, that's a certain distance from there, and that's a much, much relatively longer distance. Totally. Square law, attenuation over distance, distance applies. It's, it, that's all there is to it, is yeah. the square law of yeah. proximity and, and Oh, no, no, there, there is a third factor, right. but this means that Proximate sources, yep. okay, have this. Uh, uh, let's say that's uh, twenty millimeters, mm -hmm. and let's say that's thirty millimeters. The attenuation here is going to be uh, one on twenty squared. Uh, sorry, the, yeah, the pressure level. Mm. The 
pressure level due to that one is one on 30 squared. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about a four part to nine part difference in Got it. sound pressure. Now, what that does too is th this is uh, frequency independent. Mm -hmm. So, although at far distances right, we get this was, one yes. on F response, yep. what we get close up is in fact more that. Mm -hmm. So, this is also called the uh, proximity boost effect. Right which occurs with a number of microphones where once you get close, close up onto them yep. all of a sudden you get bottom end appearing mm -hmm. because of that right. effect there. What a stupid question. What happens if you extend this out even further as a <coughs> tube and physically make that path much longer? Oh, uh, it, it actually gets uh, both better and worse at its noise cancelling job. So there's an optimal Size option. There, there is kind of sort of because of right. this third effect. Okay. Which is. Uh, okay, let's get rid of some of the extraneous. Okay. Okay, what happens as we start moving our sound source from there to there? to there, to there, yep. to there, etc. If our sound source is there, it's going to react, particularly if we're close up and personal. Mm -hmm. If we're over here, close up and personal, yep. once again it's going to react because that is speaking onto that side much louder than it's speaking onto that side. Are they bi-direct, are they symmetrical yes, in that effect? they so are. So all figure eight mics are symmetric? Yes. Right. What happens when we start yelling at it from that direction. Mm -hmm. Doesn't okay. matter how loud we scream, the path lengths are identical. Yep. And a it's good noise cancelling figure of eight microphone will completely cancel any noise coming at it from sure. sideways. Yep. And with a lesser effect as it gets yes. out and out towards. Which leads us to uh -huh. polar responses. Got it. Okay, well if that was a very long hand way of saying. <laughs> uh, yes. Let's just say Okay, this is a polar diagram of the pickup. Yep. And can here's see, our I can see where our figure eight is going to come from yep. already. And this is our microphone. That's the front direction, yep. say. That's the back, back direction. direction. Guess what? An omnidirectional microphone mm -hmm. at mid, mid frequencies, before we get high enough in frequency mm -hmm. to get directional effects, it's got a polar pattern that's that yep. way. It doesn't matter what direction the sound's coming from, that microphone's equally sensitive. A figure eight microphone has zero at, at 90 degrees off angle, it's yep. got zero. Perfect it's got maximum, maximal response yep. fore and aft, and its polar pattern looks like that. That. Hence the name. That's right. Now, an interesting thing. Let's talk about phase. Mm. Okay, omni microphone, doesn't matter what direction you're coming from, that entire uh, circle has, if you like, positive phase. Right i.e. a positive pressure wave produces a, say, positive output from the diaphragm. Mm -hmm. Not so for this one. This one has a positive output yes. for pressure that way, mm -hmm. but if you push, put the, push the pressure in that way, and negative. It's opposite. That's yeah. right. So that's the figure eight response. And these noise cancelling microphones have some magnificent properties, including the fact that uh, how do you put, this is difficult to describe without lots of hand waving in three <laughs> yes. dimensions. But okay, if I'm if I'm pointing a microphone at you, yeah. then it'll hear you, it'll hear me, and it's got a cone of silence. In fact, a ring, a of, ring of silence, silence around extending the, all yep. around that way. Okay. Whereas an omni microphone, it doesn't matter what no. way we're pointing at yep. the. Hear everything. Okay. Now the other thing with the figure eight is, the closer I get. Mm -hmm. Not only the louder it is, but also the more bottom end it's picking up because right. because the distance from here to here yep. is so much less than the distance from here round to that side that of it. Side. So yep. that's the proximity effect. Got it. Makes sense. Yeah. And indeed, if you were to increase the, the length of that. Yep. 
that does a couple of things. Mm -hmm. First of all, it changes, uh, how do you put it, the distance at which the proximity effect starts. Right. If I've got something that's, uh, where's, where's the pen cap? Yeah. Okay. If I've got something that's that big, mm -hmm. ooh, stay, I'm pivoting here, then the ratio of distance from there to there is not very far. That one's going to work much better up right. close like that. Pick a physically larger item and I'm going to get that same ratio with that position much further away. So the longer it is physically, yep. the greater the distance at which it exhibits proximity effect. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the worse it gets as a noise cancelling microphone because it also yep. means that distant sounds around there, I'm not talking about the immediately yes, off axis, yep, but yep. distant sounds over there still get to see a reasonable low frequency response out of it. Are we getting into the shotgun effect here? Uh, in shotgun mics? Not quite, not but the quite. same principles are involved. Got it. Okay, Got it. It, it, it's all about physical size and mm -hmm. proximity and all of that. Yep. Okay, everybody's been wanting to know about cardioid microphones, haven't they? They have. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's just imagine that side by side we position an omnidirectional microphone and kind of superimpose on top of it. I'm losing my pens again. Oh, oh wicky thump lad. Why, that's why this is here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, and side by side, like right on top of it, we'll position a figure eight microphone. Right. We'll connect their outputs together. Interesting. Okay. Let's see what happens to the directional response. Okay, over here, we've got that response plus mm -hmm. this response. So we get, okay, polar diagram. We get an output of say two units, okay? Plus mm -hmm. a unit from that one. Yep. And, and plus, plus one unit, unit from, from that, that one. one. All right. Okay, let's work our way around over to halfway on. We get plus one unit from the Omni uh -huh. and, and none right. from the figure yep. eight. So uh -huh. that'll give us a plus one and a plus one. Let's now move over to here and we get <coughs> a plus one from the Omni and a minus, minus one. one. Yep. Guess what? It yep. plummets to zero. Zero. So we get a figure yeah. that looks like that. That's our cardioid yeah. pattern. Yeah. And why is it called cardioid? Yep. Because it's, it's heart shaped. Like heart shaped. That's but it. Simple as that. Easy. That okay. Makes sense. And they're all constructed like that physically using two elements. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> and this is where the black magic comes right. in. All right. Let's uh, go. Oh, incidentally, some of the properties of a cardioid microphone, mm -hmm. it's halfway between the properties of your figure eight and your yep. Omni. Seen it. It exhibits proximity uh -huh. boost. Yep. Okay, it's, it has a better low frequency response up close mm -hmm. than it does far away. It does. <coughs> it's got this hole at the back. So that, uh, uh, let's say that's the front and that's the back. Okay, it's going to receive me at full strength and full frequency response there. Yep. As I've turned it away from me, okay, I'm 6 dB down. Remember, right. I've gone from there. two from units two to, to one, one unit. unit. Yep. As I turn it fully around, it should bloody near cancel. Right. Now, one of the measures, in fact, of a good cardioid microphone are if we draw its natural frequency response, which might look a bit like that, yep. and that's front on, yep. what is the response at the rear? Now, if it's not a very good cardioid, mm -hmm which is actually rather typical of your little electrodes. Yep. They don't make very good cardioids. Yes. Like the one you're wearing uh, at the moment, which yeah. claims to be cardioid, but yeah. how good is it? It might have a response which is pretty much, uh, the, the response in that path there, mm -hmm. it's probably got no differentiation at low frequencies. Up yep. at the mid frequencies, it might get to you know, 15 dB down, 10 dB down, right. and then it's got no directional characteristics. Yep. Okay, a good studio, oh, okay, that's say 10 dB. Mm -hmm. if, it, 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 on a good day, it'll be right. 10 dB. Okay. Uh, a good studio microphone, apart from having a frequency response mm -hmm. that goes down much, yes. much further. Uh, it will have, first of all, it will depart from there much earlier. Much earlier, yep. 
be much lower it'll, in the past band. It'll come back a lot later and yeah. on a good one you might get as much as 30 dB rejection. That's a lot different. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> and this is why in a, uh, a public address system, right. say for a rock group, you mm. want a really, really good cardioid microphone because you've got a fold back wedge about a metre uh -huh. and a half away there yep. and these things are loud. Explain fold-back wedge. Uh, fold-back wedge is so that the singer can hear what they're singing in the presence of oh. guitars and drums behind them, big PA stack there. They actually want to hear what they're doing so that they can keep, mm. keep yeah, in yeah. tune vaguely. Yeah. <coughs> so and, and they actually work in a massive rock venue that's pumping and it's bleeding. You've got blood coming out of everyone's yeah. ears and they can hear themselves from the... Yeah, you can be yeah. talking uh, anywhere between 100 and 115 dB sound pressure level mm -hmm. on stage. Right. No problem. So, first of all, how, how do they get adequate signal to noise ratio? Mm. First of all, they're up, up on the microphone. Right up. That's why they're swallowing the damn thing. Yep. So yeah. that Whiskey the. Whiskey bottle in one <laughs> hand and <laughs> 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 And I've got stories about that too. <laughs> uh, 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 okay, I've He's complete lost non sequiturs. Ima images of Narara 1984 come back to mind. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Jimmy Barnes did offer me a swig for his, from his bottle of vodka. There um, you go. <laughs> uh, anyway, they're right up on there, so they could get good signal to noise ratio. Signal mm -hmm. being lips to microphone, yep. noise being guitar stacks to microphone, and in particular, oh. fold back wedge mm -hmm. to yes. microphone. Now, if they've got that null behind the microphone, mm -hmm. if they've got that null yep. in the frequency response pointing to the fold back wedge, yep. They can stand right on top of the fold back wedge and not get feedback. Yep. yep. Mind you, as soon as they go off angle a bit, they're then they're into that region right. there and they're buggered. So that's a combination of the good 30 dB rejection yes. here plus the fact across that across a wide band. Across a wide band plus the fact that you're right up in it. If yes. you were, if you had it six inches away, you might be screwed. If you had the system gain turned yep. up so high that you could actually get usable working, working at that kind of distance, distance then you're probably uh, you've got problems yep. because your signal to noise, noise. ratio yep. is just yep. not good yep. and a lot of uh, beginner singers uh, they need to be taught that compromise between mm -hmm. Not so close that they get that screaming into the microphone proximity effect. Yep. They need to get natural sound, but if they work with it too far mm -hmm. away, they're going to get into the realms of feedback. Or what they're doing these days is using in-ear monitors. Yes, so that you, you always see them. They they have their in-ear monitor, so the, they don't these need days. The yeah, right. yeah. Got it. But uh, uh, yeah, back in the seventies. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have pretty much covered. Uh, Directional pickup patterns. Oh yeah. no! Shot, shotty. No, what? no. What Hyper hypercardioid. Oh. You get a hypercardioid simply by changing yep. the balance of, uh, if you like, uh, figure eight to omni. Got it. In the mix. For example, if you reduce a little bit the amount of omni, what you wind up getting is instead of the cancellation occurring at that angle there. Mm -hmm you can get the cancellation to occur at that angle there. Right. Your, the pattern that you get out of that might look like... Uh, yep. That green one there is a hypercardioid. Cardioid. Basically by tuning the relative amounts of figure eight and omni, instead of having that uh, cone of silence immediately mm -hmm. Behind. behind the microphone, you've actually turned it literally into a cone of, of silence, silence instead uh, of a spot it. of silence. Yep. It's still going to have a bit of pick up in your direction, yep. but you've made a cone of silence that way. And got you've it. also made the forward lobe just a little bit more directional. Mm -hmm. Now, bear in mind, neither cardioids nor hypercardioids, you wouldn't call them a, a fiercely directional microphone. Yep. Uh, a lot of people are under the impression Gee, that, that yeah. when you're using a cardioid microphone, you really do have to be dead on axis. Yep. Well, no, you don't. that might Not be true right. for the very highest frequencies, but only yep. for the same reason as an omni, because yep. once you go off there, yeah, yeah. the wavelength it's just it's the wavelength right. effect across there. Mm -hmm. Their natural directivity at mid mid frequencies, not that high. Right. The one thing that you 
do you use a directional microphone for is to eliminate noise. So in yep. a cardioid, yep. if there's the noise, point the bum of the microphone at the noise. Yes, absolutely. If you've got a bunch of shops or something over there or traffic that's making noise over there and all you've got is one microphone and it's not a shotgun, mm -hmm. pick maybe a hypercardioid so that it excludes that, that cone, ring. So that's one of the practical applications, right? Yeah. Hypercardioid. Yeah. yeah. And uh, figure eights, of course, exceptional for when you want, uh, you've got bucket loads of ambient noise. Mm -hmm. You don't know what direction the ambient noise is yep. coming from. You want a microphone that's sitting here, it's up close, it's personal, and it will adequately distinguish between that close speech mm -hmm. and noise coming in from a distance. Aviation headsets. And telephony yep. call centres. And telephony call centres, yes. <laughs> Incidentally, I have an anecdote, a pattern related anecdote from <laughs> the days of doing headset microphones. Now picture this. Okay, we've got a figure eight microphone capsule and it's in a headset boom mm -hmm. that looks a bit like that. The internal structure of the, uh, of, the, of the tip of the headset boom is that that bit of the electric microphone goes to an opening at the front there. Okay. And the back of this opened into a fairly large structure there again with an opening there and that allowed the wires to kind of dribble down a yet another tube there. Okay so just to clarify we've got our figure eight microphone there, we've mm -hmm. got a front channel yep. which is closer to your lips and this back channel in there which is supposed to allow room noise that's coming in to both reach there. Mm -hmm. ah, there's a problem though. Whenever you have a tube and a cavity, you've just formed a low pass filter, yes. which might have a frequency response of something like that. Typically, typically it'll peak mm -hmm. because it's uh, ineffective. Oh, you, you, you just made a whistle. Yeah. <coughs> now, if this whistle here is at a different frequency, Mm -hmm. And in fact, I've drawn that poorly. Uh, that, that one would actually be at a higher frequency because it's got a larger opening. Got You've got these two at two quite different frequencies. Mm -hmm. Okay. From that frequency up to about that frequency, it'll cancel noise. Yep. What happens with ambient noise at frequencies above there is, first of all, look at the relative difference between mm. the front and the back. No. The front of the microphone responds to all that ambient mm. noise, so the aggregate response to <laughs> ambient noise is, is you can see it. reasonably good cancellation, yep. then it g does that. But then guess what happens? Around about there, if you're really lucky, you might get a huge notch, yep. but then guess what? <laughs> At the frequencies above that, yeah. That one becomes a whole lot louder yeah. than that one, so the aggregate frequency response does that. So, yes, right. inadvertently created a microphone that had a response that, far from being noise cancelling, actually exceeded the response <laughs> of either section at and, high frequencies. And this was a commercial mic? Uh, yes, uh, the, the, this is one that uh, incidentally came in from Asia. Right. And they didn't know what they were doing. They, they just had thought, no we, idea. We need yeah, we need, here and yeah, orifice we need here. a front orifice, we need a back orifice. <laughs> and it was so bad that the thing just howled around between the microphone and the earpiece uh, uncontrollably. <laughs> and oh, great. At the end of the day, uh, from memory, the, the cure was to uh, either drill a larger hole in there, because uh, yeah. I think I've drawn these wrongly. Uh, I think that, in keep fact, your head still. Yeah. <laughs> keep your head still. <coughs> yeah, we, 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 we had to drill those out. To, uh, hang on, I'll, I'll redraw that because that was actually quite a large and direct path. So it was the higher frequency of the two. This one was quite a constricted orifice. Right. 
and was the lower of the two, we bored it up to roughly match that simply by yeah. drilling it out. Drilling it out, nice. Yeah. Yep. And you did that through experiment or did you, were you able to determine uh, the whole size based on some we, theory? Uh, the stuff. It was theory backed by picking the right drill out of the box. <laughs> right. <laughs> Brilliant. But I was able to, uh, I, I made myself a little artificial voice, which yep. consisted of a, just a die cast box mm -hmm. with a crappy little loudspeaker in it and a small hole. Right. I then calibrated it by using a measurement microphone positioned here. Mm -hmm. When I drove that from the test system, I then measured its response there, calculate the inverse, drive the speaker with then the inverse response, and you get a flat, you know, once you've removed your measurement microphone, you get a flat frequency response of drive right. at that yep. point there. At that point. Okay, beauty. So you can come along with your microphone and you can uh, position it there mm -hmm. and measure the response front on and then block off that hole with a lump of uh, blue tack, block off <laughs> that hole with a lump of blue tack. Yep. The individual responses here then stood out, stood out. absolutely yep. clearly. And like it was, a pair of dog's balls. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. Well, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, love your stories, Doug. <laughs>